Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna take a look at this thing right here, which is the Dell Optiplex 7090 Micro. Now, this is Dell's one liter corporate desktop PC, really for like the 10th generation and 11th generation. We're gonna get to that in a little bit, but you know, really for that, those generations of the Intel Core series processors, there are definitely some new features in this generation. As part of our Project Tiny Me Micro series, we're looking at these one liter corporate desktop PCs from Dell, HP, and Lenovo. And we're really looking at, you know, what do we have today in terms of desktop PCs, but then also, you know, can you go convert them to Linux and go use them as little tiny clusters of servers? Not everybody has room or wants to hear a large loud server. And these things are absolutely awesome. They're very inexpensive on a relative scale. And you get things that you know are pretty darn useful and pretty cool. Now, if you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, Patrick, haven't we seen something very similar? The answer is yes, it's actually been a while, but we did this unit over here, which is the 7080 micro, which is on this side. And this is our 7090 micro. And you're gonna see that they look relatively identical. And we're gonna talk about the differences between these two because not really by design, actually by a total uh, chance and some bad luck maybe, we actually got the wrong processor in this one. And so they actually are configured very similarly. So the game plan today is that we're gonna take a look at the 7090. We're gonna talk about all the features like we normally do, talk a little bit about the differences between this and the previous generation, talk about the differences between this from Dell and also the HP and Lenovo units that will be competitive with this. And then I wanna just kind of give you a little story that I think is super fun on how we got this unit. So with that, let's kind of get to the hardware. Okay, now looking at the front of the system, the first thing I actually wanna talk about is the Dell logo. This is a very small feature, but it's something because we've done over, you know, three dozen, I think we're getting closer to four dozen of these tiny mini microsystems at this point, you notice these little things. And that is in the 7080 and 7090 generations, we lost a cool feature that I really liked. This is super small, but this is actually the Dell Optiplex 7060 micro. I don't know where the 7070 micro is, but this is the 7060 micro. And what you're gonna see is that we have the little Dell logo here. It's a different color and all. But one of the really cool things is that you can actually go and adjust it. So if you wanna you know, put it on your desk like this, you can see the Dell logo and it's the right way. But if let's say you wanna go tip it up on its side, now the Dell logo is going the wrong way. And back then there used to be the ability to flip it and that gives you the ability to have your logo oriented correctly. With the new generation, it's only oriented correctly if it's vertical. Now that we've talked about the world's smallest feature, let's get to the more impactful ones. And specifically, let's go and let's really talk about this whole, you know, USB situation up front because I think that's one of the big differentiators of this generation versus the previous generation. Now we get the USB three and this is a 10 gigabit per second port and that's a type A port. And that's kind of something that we saw in the previous generation as well. But the new thing is actually this type C port. Now this type C port is a USB 3.2 gen two by two port, which is a 20 gigabit per second port. Now, I don't know what you think about USB naming. I mean, definitely let me know in the comments, but personally how I kind of feel like USB naming at this point has become so awkward. It's kind of like if you've seen somebody go out and they've never actually done any martial arts training, but they just watched like a karate movie. They went outside and they like, you know, sat on the beach and they tried doing their own like martial arts, but then everybody's kind of like standing there looking at them like, hey, obviously you have no idea what you're doing. And it just kind of is awkward for everybody looking at it. That's basically USB naming conventions because like these guys must be coming up like, hey, let's call this thing USB, you know, two by two. Like, what the heck, guys? Just call it 20 gigabit per second. Let's move on with life. But again, let me know what you think in the comments. Now, aside from the USB ports, we actually get something that's kind of cool. We get a headset port, which a lot of these tiny mini micro nodes have. But the one thing that Dell does, which I actually really like, is the fact that you get a line out port on the front as well. And so you get two, I guess, audio outputs. Now, if you're just going to use this as a Linux server, maybe you don't care. But if you are using this as a desktop, it is nice to have that extra audio interface. A lot of these systems from HP and also Lenovo don't have those, so it is a differentiator. Okay, now let's get to the back of the system and let's keep on that USB train. Specifically, we get four USB type A ports. Now two of these are 10 gigabit per second and two of them are five gigabit per second. Dell also gives us two DisplayPort outputs. That's a little different than what we see. I mean, the HP, I think that's a pretty common configuration, but Lenovo gives you usually a DisplayPort and an HDMI port. And then, you know, these things all have the ability to go and add an optional port. And that's what we'll talk about next. 
Now, specifically here, we don't really have that optional port. You can see that there's a little cutout here and that's kind of a bummer actually. And this is the one thing that I think that really differentiates the other solutions from HP and Lenovo versus the Dell solution. Dell is a lot less customizable. Now I'm gonna, of course, tell you to go look at the reviews for these things, um, cause we're not gonna go into the other options in this video, but the Dell Optiplex 7090 Micro is on top. Below that we have the Think Center, the Lenovo Think Center M set M90Q Tiny Gen 2. And then the bottom one here is an Elite Desk 800, I think it's a G6. And I think you're gonna see pretty quickly what the difference is. Now, Dell has the option to put one port in there and there's a whole bunch of different options on in terms of what you can get. You can get like another HDMI port, display port, there's USB options, all kinds of stuff that you can get in that, but there's only one place for it. When we go to the Lenovo, we actually have this long uh, spot and then we also have the ability to go and have two different things. So if you wanna have like a two serial port option, you can actually do something like that or multiple USB ports, you can do that in the Lenovo. On the HP side, they do something that's a little bit different as well. First, there's a, the Flex IO port, which you can see this one actually has something in it. And that is the HDMI port in this one. And that's actually the Flex, uh, Flex IO uh, 2. There's actually V2, there's a V1. We're gonna get into that. That caused a lot of problems and that's why we're not doing it a, an HP one uh, at this time. We're gonna do one pretty soon, but we're gonna talk about what that is. But still you have that. And then you also have this other kind of bracket kind of over here where you can go and that, that would be where you'd have like the DGPU uh, option or you'd have you know the option to have other ports and stuff like that. So basically Dell has like one expansion port, whereas, you know, both Lenovo and HP can do two or more. Now, of course, if you're not gonna put anything in an expansion port, you don't care. And if you're only gonna put one port, like let's say you just wanted an extra HDMI port or USB port or something like that, you're also not gonna care because Dell has you covered. I will just quickly note that there is a DGPU option and it's a different chassis. I think there's actually like three different chassis that this can have because you need to have like a PCIe slot for that DGPU. Uh, specifically, there is an option for an AMD kind of lower end, like laptop AMD Radeon in these. I actually think that like the HP option, HP actually allows you to configure a, in this generation, a NVIDIA 1660 Ti, I think. And I think that's just kind of a better option. Lenovo has options, uh, quite a few options actually, especially if you start looking at their uh, like P350, P340, like those kind of lines as well. And so I think that there are a bunch of different options that you know you have in terms of Lenovo GPUs. HP, I think has a better GPU offering and Dell's offering is kind of okay, I guess. But at the same time, Dell also needs to use not just a different motherboard, but they also need to use a different chassis. So it's a little bit different than what we have here. And just because of where this placement is, you would lose that extra output if you did go and add, you know, one of those DGPU options. Now, in terms of networking, Dell usually has an external antenna, which is what we have here. And then also you have a RJ45. So this is a one gigabit ethernet port powered by the Intel i219LM. And the reason that Intel i219LM is important is because this system does support vPro because we have the core i5 10500T. And also this, con this system was configured for that. You can actually see underneath our Windows 10 sticker that we also have our core i five V pro sticker from Intel right here. And that tells us that this is a V pro enabled system. And if you have a V pro enabled system, you need an Intel NIC because it's an Intel technology. I do want to just talk about some of the little tiny creature comforts. I actually really like that what Dell does here. So we have the Kensington lot port, of course, but then there's also this like little tab and hopefully you guys can see this, but there's this little tab here and you can actually go lock the chassis. So you can't open the chassis, not just, you can't seal the whole thing, but you can't like just open it and take out components, I guess like Maybe that's the thing. And so there is a little lock for that or a little uh, lock hole for that. So you can't pull the cover off. And then the other thing is that to get inside, you have this like little thumb screw, but next to the thumb screw, you have this little tiny little little holder. And that what that is for is really to go and hold the power supply cable in. And these things, you know, don't have locking power supply. So having that little bit of retention there allows you to make sure that like somebody doesn't like kick the power cable and it like just pulls right out or something like that. So I do kind of like that little feature. It's just a nice little thing that Dell has been doing for generations. And I really like that. The other thing is that when we get inside, we're gonna open this up right now, but this thumb screw is retained. HP also has a retained screw in their design for their clamshell or whatever you'd call this, but Lenovo doesn't for some reason and we lose those Lenovo screws like crazy in the lab. Now getting inside, of course you undo that thumb screw and now you're inside and you can basically see the system right here. Now the basic layout of the system is more similar to I think HP's layout than it is Lenovo's layout. 
Specifically, all the components are on the front side of this motherboard. Now on the top of this, what you're gonna see is that we have the CPU, so this is where the you know CPU sits. And then next to that is actually under the fan is where the memory resides. You get two SODIM slots. You can go up to 64 gigs, and we definitely do customize these quite a bit to go up to something like 64 gigs. Our particular system only has a single 16 gig DIMM, but in all of these systems, I always tell people always go and make sure that you have two DIMMs. And because if you have two SODIMs, you get dual channel memory and having dual channel memory means that you get better performance both for the CPU as well as the integrated graphics. Personally, I actually kind of like the single 16 gig configuration because that makes it pretty easy just to go add another 16 gig SODIM and then you're all set. I will say though that just getting this off, it's you have to take off the entire fan shroud. So it's a single piece that goes from the CPU to the fan and you know covers the memory. So if you do wanna go service anything, I mean, basically you have to go take this whole thing off. There's some wires and stuff. And so really I think HP's design with a flip up fan is a little bit easier or maybe even a lot bit easier to go service. Also Lenovo's with the SODIMs on the back is also way easier to service as well. Now at the bottom here, you can actually see that we have a two and a half inch hard drive bracket. And I actually really like this design by Dell because you basically just go and you pop this. I'm not even looking at this thing. I'm doing this, right? You go pop the little tray out and you can see this is a totally toolless tray. It's super easy to insert and pull out. And then you basically have this hard mounted SATA data and power connector. Now, HP and Lenovo, they have the little cables and frankly, sometimes they get damaged and they're just a little bit of a pain to have just kind of flooping around in the system. So I kind of like this hard mounted SATA thing. At the same time, I can see why Lenovo and HP use the ribbon cable because I think it gives them a little bit more flexibility when it comes to rear expansion. So it's kind of like one of those things that's actually kind of nice if you're gonna use a two and a half inch drive. If you're not gonna use a two and a half inch drive, it probably is a detriment to Dell. And the other kind of cool feature is that we do get two M.2 slots. Now, if you're using an 11th gen processor, which we don't have, but if you were using an 11th gen processor, you could get PCIe Gen 4, and that would be a big feature upgrade. We have seen that on some of the other units. We just, uh, this is what we have. And then the other side to it is that the other slot is gonna be PCIe Gen 3, by four. And so you can put two SSDs in here. You can do RAID. You can also do things like you could have an Optane module and then do a hard drive, I guess, if uh, you know you want a two and a half inch hard drive with Optane. I don't, I don't really think most of our readers are gonna want that, but you could if you wanted to do that, I guess. But overall, I do like that configuration. I will say though that it is similar to how HP does their units, but Lenovo having the M.2 SSDs on the back, I actually like that. I prefer that from a serviceability standpoint because you don't have to go take this little bracket out. At the same time, you know, even if you do have a two and a half inch drive there, it's pretty easy to go pull the hard drive bracket out. So it's not really a big deal, but I do like the Lenovo model better because I think it's just way easier to service now that we've done a bunch of them. And the other thing is that Lenovo has the little blue tabs that are toolless, whereas this requires a little tiny screwdriver. Now in this one, you can see that we have a little tiny M.2 2230, 256 gig SSD. This is not a fancy SSD. And it's definitely one that I think is a good for like, if you're just gonna have like a boot device or something like that, it's great, but it is something that I think a lot of our readers are gonna say like, oh, that's cool, but I'm gonna go add a you know better SSD as my second SSD. I think that that would totally be something that I would personally do to customize the system. And so that's just kind of what it is in here. You're also gonna see that we have the Wi-Fi module. This is an Intel AX201, which means that this is a Wi-Fi 6 generation system. So with that, I wanna tell the little story in terms of the CPU and how we got this thing all mixed up. I actually won an auction on eBay and basically, cause it was cheaper to get the system, but the system said that it had a Core i7, but it didn't say what Core i7 it had. And it was somebody that just said like, hey, I'm selling this thing because I had, I won it and I'm gonna go and switch over to an Apple ecosystem. So it was still all in like the new box. It was all new and all that kind of stuff, but it was just one of those ones that I was like, ah, okay, I guess this, this kind of makes sense. So I got it for a little under $800. And then I, you know, put, turned it on and I noticed like it, it actually had a Core i5 uh, 10500T. So it's kind of a bummer because I was really kind of hoping to look at the Core i7, but it also means that this system has the exact same processor that we saw in the previous generation 7080 micro. But it is kind of weird that we have two of the like units that look pretty similar, but they have two different CPUs. So just kind of talking about the differences here, really the 7080 was more of the ninth gen and 10th gen core series, whereas the 7090 is 10th and 11th gen. Now with the 11th gen, of course, we get things like PCI Gen 4 support, which is definitely awesome. Totally think that that's a great option. We also get features like that USB 3 2x2 port. And then in terms of chipset, you actually do get a different chipset. So the 7090 micro, you get the Q570 chipset, whereas the 7080 micro, you get the Q470 chipset. We're not gonna go into everything on that, but I just wanna give you the stats so that way you can go look it up. 
Okay, let's get to performance and power consumption. First, in terms of performance. Now, this is the first time that we've actually had two models from different generations with the exact same processor in them for all of the tiny mini micro series. I went and looked, and this was the first one I could find. And so, what I wanted to do was just kind of look at, like, well, is there is having the Q570 solution? Does that give you more CPU performance? Did Dell change something in terms of the cooling? Like, is there some reason that the new version would take the same processor and run faster than the previous version? And the answer to that is frankly no. Now that might be exactly what you expected. It was kind of what I expected too, but I just wanted to go and validate that basically, you know, if you see a 70 80 micro and a 70 90 micro and they both have the same processor realistically you should probably if, you, if you're not going to use that usb port or something like that it might be worth just getting a older version because that could be less expensive but i do want to highlight the fact that the core i5 10500t was a big deal and one of the reasons it was a big deal is because that's when intel moved us to six cores six threads in this generation so I always talk about the breakpoint between like the 7500t and 8500t which were you know the core i5s a couple generations prior and that's really where intel went from you know that kind of like four cores up to six cores so that was a big the 8500t is a big breakpoint for that now on the core i5 10500T, you know, that's where we get six cores, six threads. And so that actually looks very similar to previous generation Core i7 systems. And so definitely I would say that, that this is a big upgrade and it's something that is absolutely awesome. Now, of course, the 11th gen core brings the new graphics and also PCIe Gen 4 support. So there are things that if you go and look at that 11th gen, you know, are definitely out there and are interesting. But at the same time, I think that the big breakpoint, at least to me, is really this 10500T versus the previous generation Core i5, 9500T, and 8500. Now, talking about power consumption, we have, you know, this 90 watt power brick. And overall, this is not too bad in terms of power consumption. I will just quickly note though, that if you did look at the previous generation, like if you're looking back in like the 6500, 7500T versions, you're gonna see that those things only have like 65 watt power bricks. So the power consumption is definitely going up, but the flip side to it is really, it's not necessarily as much at idle. The, it's really kind of more of the maximum power consumption where you're able to start seeing peaks in that 65 and you know maybe a little bit over range and so you do need a bigger power supply because that's what really helps you go and you know if you want to add like two m.2 ssds or if you wanted to go do things like have big usb devices you need more power from the power supply and that's why we're seeing bigger beefier power supplies <laughs> Now with all these Project Tiny Mini Micro videos, I always like to do key lessons learned because we're reviewing dozens of these things. And at some point, you know, you can't just say like, okay, this is the best thing ever. And like, you know, like you have to go and have some thoughts, right? In terms of what these are. And you just don't really see that online that much. So I wanna kind of give you a couple thoughts. So first off, the 7080 Micro to 7090 Micro, there are definitely some improvements, especially if you're gonna go get that 11th gen core and you want the new graphics and you also want, you know, PCIe gen four and all that kind of stuff. You also get that USB through three, uh, two by two port, I mean, sure. That's totally cool, awesome. But at the same time, I think if you're in this 10th gen, I don't necessarily know if, especially if I'm buying them used, I actually think that the 7080, if you do start seeing those things dip in price significantly, uh, you know, lower prices than these systems where you have the 10th gen, but in the 7090 micro, I do think I would probably get the 7080 over the 7090 just to save a few bucks because the Delta to me is just not that big. And the other one is also gonna be pretty controversial, I think. I mean, at this point, Dell's one liter PC is, definitely behind in terms of, you know, serviceability, expandability, all that kind of stuff. I just, frankly, it's very noticeable when you have hands-on all of these units that there's a big delta between, you know, Lenovo has this like chassis that you have the front side, backside components. I mean, everything is very well laid out, very easy to service. I mean, I can do those things blindfolded at this point. HP, I think has some things like they have the little fan that's on the little door so you can get into the dims easier. I really like that. They also have more expandability options and they have that, you know, kind of flex IOV too, but then also the extra you know, series of ports that you can put in as well. So there's more expansion in both the Lenovo and HP versus the Dell. And just frankly, to me, you know, if you're really looking at these things as a platform that you want to expand and customize, I think that the Lenovo and HP units are much better. If you just kind of want a base configuration, frankly, they're not really going to matter that much between all of them at this point. And so Dell has a perfectly fine unit and you do still get that one little port that you can go customize if you really want it. But I also really think that Dell needs to have an AMD Ryzen Pro series that's equivalent to their high-end 7090 
And I'm not saying like, oh, like go put this at like the 3000 or 5000 series Optiplex, really at that higher end 7000 series Optiplex. I think that Dell really needs an AMD option at this point. AMD has a really good product. And the fact that Dell doesn't offer it is kind of a bummer. If you are a Dell shop, you're probably not gonna go switch to HP or Lenovo. But if you were kind of deciding like, hey, I have a growing business and I wanna decide like, you know, which, which, which desktop do I really want? Uh, in, in my business, I, I would frankly not get this Dell. I would go get the Lenovo or the HP units because I think that, you know, they just have a better ecosystem. And Dell, these, these guys have been out with systems, with AMD systems for years and Dell still doesn't have one. I mean, that's kind of crazy. Now, of course, there are some caveats to that. Like if you have seen Lenovo is PSP locking the Ryzen Pro series. So it's not necessarily all gumdrops and Skittles over there. But at the same time, I do think that I really want to see Dell have a AMD option because it is kind of important that, you know, you have both, you know, an Intel and an AMD option. So that way you can go like, like if one is falling behind a little bit, you can go and, you know, get the other one in your business and still stay with that same vendor. So it's kind of a bummer that Dell doesn't do that. So hey guys, I hope you like this look at the Dell Optiplex 7090 Micro. It was a lot of fun to go review. And if you did like this review, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.